AP Physics students, great to see you. It's Mr. Heinrich. We're looking at Unit 6, FRQ2, from the AP Classroom Progress Checks. Let's look at this one. So a moon is moving clockwise in an elliptical orbit around a planet, as shown in Figure 1. Points A and C are the locations where the moon is closest and farthest from the planet, respectively. And point B is equidistant from points A and C. The distances from the planet to points A, B, and C are RA, RB, and RC, respectively. So part A, figures 2 and 3 each show the planet and a portion of the moon's orbit, including points A and B. A1. In figure 2, draw arrows to indicate the direction of the moon's velocity at points A and B. If the velocity is 0 at either point, write V equals 0 next to the appropriate dot. And then A2. In figure 3, draw arrows to indicate the direction of the moon's acceleration at both points points A and B, if the acceleration is zero at either point, write A equals zero next to the appropriate dot. No problem. Let's go for it. All right, well, for A1, we're looking for the velocity, and we know that as this moon travels in this elliptical orbit, that its linear velocity will always be tangent to the curve. So at this point, point A, it's got a tangential velocity, meaning this velocity is touching the curve at one point only. And at B, we would also have a tangential velocity. And don't worry about making this shorter or longer than this velocity. They're not concerned about the relative lengths at this point in the problem. And for A2, they want the acceleration vectors. So as the moon is trying to head in a straight line, it's not able to because there is a center-seeking acceleration acting inward just like that. We call it centripetal acceleration. And at B, there is also a pull on this moon to the planet, and therefore the acceleration is along the same line. Remember, if there's a net force acting this direction, there will also be an acceleration. Again, this is a centripetal acceleration just like this one. All right, that's it for A. Let's go on to B. Setting up part B, the moon's mass is m sub m. At point A, its speed is VA, and it is a distance RA from the planet. At point B, its speed is VB, and it is a distance RB equals 5 halves RA from the planet, as indicated in figure 4. There is a 53 degree angle between the line joining the planet and point B, and the line joining the planet and point C. So right here, there's a 53 degree angle, is what they're saying. Okay, part B, starting with the constant conservation of angular momentum derive an expression for the moon's speed vb when it is at point B, express your answer in terms of m sub m, v a, r a, and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing either a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference book. All right, so part B, let's check out how to find vb using the conservation of angular momentum. That is to say, the sum of my initial angular momentum will equal the sum of my final angular momentum. All right, so what's going on initially? And in the last progress check, I was substituting in I omega for L. And I was a point mass in the last FRQ also, so I was MR squared, and omega was V over R. And therefore, my R canceled out with one of the R squared Rs, and you ended up with MRV. And that completely works. We can do that, but there is another equation for L. Angular momentum L is also equal to the momentum times the radius. But keep in mind this is the perpendicular radius, and that's going to help us here. All right, so let's get into it. So initially, our moon is right at this location A, and it's a distance RA from the planet that's right here. So using this equation, remember that P is equal to MV times that perpendicular radius. So I can put in mass of the moon times my velocity A times my perpendicular radius. But you'll notice the radius is perpendicular to the velocity, so let's just put in RA, and that's good. Going over to the other location, which is point B, we can see that things have changed a little bit. We still have the same mass for the moon, but our velocity has changed. It's velocity B at this point, but what about our perpendicular radius? If I just look at this radius, which I know is 5 halves of our A, that's not going to quite cut it because this radius is not perpendicular to that velocity V. B. So what I need to do is remember this is 53 degrees right there, and I can continue this line and then drop a line right here, and now we have this line right here, which is perpendicular to VB. What would this side be? Well, if this hypotenuse is RB, then this side would be RB times the sine 
of 53, correct? Okay, so let's plug in RB sine 53 right in here. And there we go. Yeah, I had to kind of write down at a slant, but you can see that it's all right there. Now, what do we have on both sides? Well, we've got the mass of the moon on both sides. Let's cross it out. And let's solve for the thing we're looking for, which is VB. VB would be equal to VA times RA all over RB sine 53. And we're so close. But if you look at our given list, we have VA, we have RA, but RB is not one of our givens, but RB is equal to this amount of RA. So let's plug that in for RB. I will get VB equals VA RA all over five halves RA times four fifths. Where did four fifths come from? Well, four fifths is sine 53. Let me prove it to you. A lot of people forget about this special triangle right here. This is a 37, 53, 90. And with this triangle, this side is 5x, this side is 4x, and this side is 3x. And what is sine again? It's opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 53 would be equal to 4x, the opposite side, over the hypotenuse, 5x. The x's cross out, and sine of 53 is 4 fifths. So I'm plugging that in for the sine of 53 right there. Awesome. What happens to the fives? Oh my goodness, they cross out. And check it out. This two crosses out, leaving this four as a two. Four divided by two is two. And what else crosses out? The RAs cancel out. So everything's dropping and we get this simplistic expression, VB equals VA over two. That is to say that when the moon is right here, it's traveling half as fast as when it was right here at point A. Let's box this answer and let's move on to part C. All right, part C. On the axis in figure five, sketch a graph of the moon's kinetic energy as a function of its distance R from the planet. RA and RC are the distances from the planet to points A and C, respectively. Notes, your graph should only include distances attained by the moon for the orbit shown in figure one. On the vertical axis, the quantity Ka is equal to one half m sub m v a squared. And on the horizontal axis, we're looking at how that kinetic energy is going to change from point A to point C in the moon's elliptical orbit. So just to give context, we're looking at kinetic energy at point A all the way to point C. What's happening with kinetic energy? So at point A, I have a velocity. We already know that. And at point B, we just found that the velocity is half of what it used to be. And as we go further and further, you can see that the velocity is going to get smaller and smaller because the distance is getting greater and greater from this moon to that planet. And the greater the distance, the less net force is pulling on that moon, and therefore the less the velocity that the moon is experiencing. I barely drew it. So what does that look like on our graph? Well, at point A, I am at RA, and I have kinetic energy A, so we should start right here. And at point C, the moon is still moving, albeit very slowly. If it stopped moving, it would crash right into that planet. So it does have some velocity, but not very much. And therefore, I'm going to give it a kinetic energy that is pretty small. Now, I shouldn't draw a straight line. I should draw a line that looks like this. There, that looks good, just like that. Now, why is it looking like this? Well, think about it. Yes, the velocity is reducing, but the velocity is being squared. So kinetic energy is proportional to V squared. So since my velocity is reducing and it's being squared, kinetic energy is actually decreasing exponentially, which would look like this curve right there. Okay, C is done, moving on to D. All right, part D, indicate whether the graph you drew in part C is consistent with the velocity and acceleration you indicated for point B in part A. It is consistent, check that box, and let's talk about why. Okay, before we justify, I wanna remind you of some important things. This is V sub A, this is V sub B, which is half of that velocity right there. And this is our acceleration that's pointing towards the planet, which makes sense. There's an unbalanced force producing this centripetal acceleration. But this acceleration actually has two components. It has a component AX and a component AY. But if you just look at this AX here, you can see it's acting against this forward moving velocity. And therefore, it makes sense that this velocity is slowing down because of that opposite directed acceleration. 
So when they ask us, are VB in acceleration at point B consistent with our graph, the answer is yes. And this is what we would say. And the graph shows that at point B, the kinetic energy has been reduced. The acceleration, which is directed at the planet, has an X component that is opposed to the velocity at point B. Therefore, the velocity should be reduced, which corresponds with a reduced kinetic energy, which shows that the acceleration and the velocity are both consistent consistent with the graph. Well, that was a tough FRQ, everybody. We made it through it. Like, subscribe. I'll get the next one out to you real soon. Have a great evening. Have a great day whenever you're watching this thing. See ya.